Applying for a job can be one of the most nerve-wracking things you do. And when asked, most people will freely admit that they hate interviews and get so nervous that they are convinced they will fail. I've had a fair few interviews over the years and I've interviewed a great many more times. So I want to share with you some interview tips that I've used myself and also used to coach others. You want that job? Great, because I'm going to help you get it. A successful interview relies on several elements coming together and making you stand out from all the other candidates. From pre-interview preparation and initial impressions to coming across with confidence and being in the correct mindset to answer any question. If you haven't seen my first seven interview tips video, you should definitely check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. So let's get to it. Number one, when you arrive for the interview, start by being polite, friendly and engaging to the person on the reception. If you have to sign in, take the opportunity to engage in friendly conversation. It doesn't have to be deep and meaningful. You can comment on how nice a reception area looks and that it must be a nice place to work. Or you could ask if they have a large number of people to greet every day and tell them how impressed you are that you can always be so welcoming and smiling. They know you're here for an interview, so you could even say that you were feeling nervous when you came in, but as they've given you such a warm smile, you instantly felt better. Complimenting them on how good they are at their job gets you remembered from the start, but if the receptionist is of the opposite sex, don't make any references to their looks. They don't know you, and your attempt at being charming can come across wrong, particularly if you're feeling nervous. You will be amazed at how many interviewers will ask the reception staff what they thought of each candidate when they arrive. I've done it myself numerous times. If they say you were friendly and seemed really likeable, that's going to reflect well on you. Number two. If you're seated with a number of other candidates, don't be intimidated by them. They may look calm and collected, their suit may look more expensive. You may be surprised at how many other candidates are being interviewed, but you have to put all of that to one side in your mind. Chances are they're all sitting, looking around, thinking everyone else looks better than them and desperately trying not to show how nervous they really are. You may find one or two who are full of chat, trying to come across as the alpha in the room. Smile politely, but don't get drawn into conversations with them. Remember that in settings such as this, the loudest person in the room is also the most nervous. Just remain centred and focused. You've been shortlisted, just as they have, and you have every right to be there. And when you get in the room, that's when you'll prove you're the one who deserves the job. Number three, think of how you want to grow at that company. A common question at interviews is, where do you see yourself in five years? You should have an answer prepared for that which is directly tied in to what the company does. Your answer should have two key elements, but most people only talk about one. They will say how ambitious they are, how they want to succeed, and that they feel the company is the right place for them. This is a great answer, but it's only half of the answer. If a company hires you, every penny they spend on you with mentoring, training courses, sending you to conferences, etc., is an investment they expect to get a return on. They are not interested in putting all that effort in for you to use them as a stepping stone to another job. So the second part of the answer is to tie in your ambitions with the aims of the company. As an example, if the job is in sales, you could say that in five years you hope to have provided the company with consistent and reliable sales to current customers and hope by then to be in a position to lead a sales team of your own, to work as hard as you have done and to be part of the decision making process for gaining a bigger market share of prestigious new customers. It could be that when you did some research about the company before applying, you read about new products or services they plan to launch, and you would be interested in being part of their exciting new projects in the future. This demonstrates very clearly that you have thought about what they can offer you, what you can offer them, and that you are looking to stay with them for many years and are therefore worth investing in. Number four, be memorable. We are all individuals and unique in our own way, but then so is everyone else at that interview. You may want to wear something that stands out, but it has to be subtle and appropriate. I would certainly avoid comedy ties. As a personal example, on my suit, I have a platoon insignia from my military service. It's subtle, but often gets commented on and remembered. A safer alternative is to include something quirky in your CV. Perhaps you spent your summer volunteering in a homeless shelter. Perhaps as a child, you were the voice of a children's cartoon character. Or perhaps you once got surrounded at an airport because people mistook you for Brad Pitt. It doesn't have to be related to the job application. In fact, it probably will work better if it isn't. It just has to be something memorable about you that sparks a conversation. Number five, 
Understand the difference between confidence and arrogance. This can be challenging as how you're received is going to be subjective to your audience. A technique to help this is when you are questioned about a skill, underplay it slightly compared to your application or CV, which they will have in front of them so that they fill in the extra details themselves. Let's say for example that you won an award for best sales last year at your current job. When asked about your sales ability, you state that you worked very hard last year and had an excellent end of year sales figure. And then you stop. This is when the interviewer will look back at your application and say, it says here you won an award for those sales. To which you can reply, yes I did. That was a very nice way to end a very good year. You have now come across as confident yet humble and you have let the interviewer validate you so you didn't have to do it yourself. See how that works? Number six, body language counts. There are thousands of studies that detail the power of body language in every type of human interaction and you'll find dozens of excellent videos on YouTube that go into it in more detail than I can here. There are some fundamental things to keep in mind during your interview. When you're called in, stand up straight with chest forward and shoulders back. A smile and a firm handshake are a must. When you enter the room, keep smiling and make eye contact with everybody in the room. Walk in with a wide stride and a determined air. If there is a panel on the other side of the desk, lean forward and offer a handshake to them all. As you lean forward, turn your body slightly to the side of the hand you are offering. This makes the handshake seem less stilted. Smile broadly and tell them it's a pleasure to meet them. Pause a moment to be invited to sit down before doing so. Sit up straight in the chair. Don't slouch back as it looks rude. And don't lean forward on the edge of your seat as it gives the impression that you can't wait to get up and leave. Now this may be exactly how you feel inside, but there's no need to show it. Legs can be crossed or feet flat on the floor, whichever is more natural for you. Keep your knees quite close together to avoid any potential concerns over man spreading. If you suffer from shaky legs when nervous, it would probably be better to plant both feet firmly on the floor. The goal is to be open, so don't build a wall between the panel and yourself. If you have a folder or portfolio, then set it to the side, along with pens and water if you have some. Subconsciously, having objects placed between you and another person signals a wish to hide. If you're expressive with your hands, that's great. You can rest them on the desk, palms turned upwards. Don't fidget, don't keep touching your face. If you suffer from fidgety hands, then you can hold them in your lap, again with, you, with them relaxed and palms upward. Number seven, reframe your thinking. It's very easy to get into the mindset that the company has the job you need and you really hope that they'll be nice and give it to you. This immediately puts you in a negative frame of mind as you have put all the power with them and left yourself feeling powerless. Yes, when all is said and done, it is their decision to offer you the job, but it's also your decision if you want to take it. Always keep in mind that this is a two-way process and they should want you as much as you want them. A technique to keep this balance in mind is to avoid self-depreciation. Phrases to avoid include, I really hope you give me a chance to prove myself. I know you have lots of excellent other applicants. I probably don't have all the experience you're looking for. Instead, make as many statements as possible a positive for you. If you do have to address a weakness in your application or skill set, put it into a two-part sentence with a negative at the beginning. As research shows, we focused more on the last information we heard. So instead of saying, I've done some office jobs, but I've never done anything like this one. Reframe this to, well, I've not done that particular task before. As you can see from my CV, I've done many other office-based tasks and shown that I'm quick to pick up new skills when required. Reframing is a hugely important skill, not just for job interviews, but for life. And it's something that I encourage you to do every day, and not only in how you speak to others, but also with your internal dialogue. Do you have any other interview tips you want to share with the rest of the community? If so, please put them in the comment section below. I hope this video has been helpful. If so, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. I produce new videos every week, so make sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I'm Bear Clark, and I'll see you again real soon.